I'm here with uh, Monica Villamizar and Jordan Bryan, uh, directors, and Jordan, the uh, subject of the documentary Transition. Uh, Jordan, first and foremost, I'm glad you're alive. Uh, just doing this interview, um, I got the interview requests before seeing the documentary, so I was, uh, you know, somewhat of a spoiler. But uh, had I gone into this cold, my heart would have been racing, just thinking, "God, I hope he makes it through this," because uh, you're really in the belly of the beast. What I mean, what what what's that like for you? Like just to make the decision to go in there in the first place. I mean, yeah, I was in the village with my colleague, Farzad Fetrad Teddy, because we were making a film about this Taliban unit for the New York Times. And so, you know, my personal life and my my gender identity was, uh, wasn't really uh, a part of the work initially. And, you know, Teddy and I were just there to, to do our jobs. We were, we're filmmakers and part of our job is to, you know, confront and connect with people that we may not necessarily like. But I must say that because of the, the transgender thing, it was very tricky and at times terrifying, yes. Yeah, Monica, what, what brought you into this project? I, I'd, I've seen you've done plenty of journalism before, but uh, I, uh, by MD, IMDb, this is your first directing credit, so... Kind of tell us a bit about yourself and what brought you into this. Yeah, thanks so much. So I I am a journalist still, and I cover a lot of I guess hostile areas or conflict. Although the label conflict journalist is something I you know I don't really like, but um, I started producing long longer form uh, series and documentaries with Matthew Heineman, and then I decided I wanted to take a big leap and try to direct uh, my first film. Uh, I met Jordan you know, was fascinated by his his story as a journalist, too, because I had often been asked as a woman in difficult situations, war zones um, by people if they could film the behind the scenes of my life. And I thought my life behind the scenes is really not that interesting. But when I met Jordan and heard about him and heard about the sort of intimate access he was getting with these Taliban fighters, I was fascinated by his whole um, internal process, his own journey inside, and the things that he was um, living behind the scenes almost became more interesting to me, and I thought to an audience as well would be really interesting because, you know, in in reportage, you get sort of a chunk of reality and the filmmaker or the reporter or the DP just kind of cuts the everything that's personal to them. And I think this is a more holistic view and, and was really fascinated by it. And Jordan and uh, Monica, you probably speak on this. Towards the end, you have a, a question of, should I even make this documentary? I, you seem to be wrestling with just doing the documentary itself and lying. And, you know, first of all, that's just heartbreaking that you would even consider that, that question, uh, given the situation. As journalists, what's kind of your ethical code going forward when uh, not not just with this story, but any story that you're going to uh, dive into, because you have like a uh, war zones. If you infiltrate like a uh, pedophiles or something like that, you know, th there's any number of things where you're going to have to be deceitful going in. And that's kind of the only reason you got to be deceitful going in is because these are not good people to begin with. Mm. Yeah, this is a, it's an interesting discussion because, you know, at the core of, of my filmmaking, I believe that, and not even at the core of my filmmaking, but the core of my existence as a human being on earth, I always want to extend my values to people that I don't like. And so even if I don't like somebody, I will still listen, treat them with respect, try to understand their perspective. And so you know, we do that. And then on top of that, as a filmmaker, when I go into these worlds, I leave my own moral compass at the door and I immerse myself in the world with these people. This is not everybody's way. I've had conversations with other journalists who say that this is deceitful, but I don't, I don't agree. My job as a filmmaker is to bring out the best of my characters, right? And so I leave my own moral compass and my own value judgments at the door and I go with them in their world and immerse myself. And of course, this becomes extremely 
um, tr- tormenting because when you then come out of that world and go back to your your own world and return to your own moral compass, you know, you can really be in a bit of a, a psychological storm because you do, you can lose yourself for a bit. But I wouldn't say that, that Teddy and I were being deceitful with the Taliban at all. We were very, very honest about who we were. The whole transgender thing is, uh, I mean, it's nobody's business whether you're trans or not, right? Nobody's obliged to disclose. And in this situation, we couldn't tell them I was transgender because it wouldn't have been safe. And also it's it's better for them if they don't know because then they are just, you know, ignorant to the whole thing and then, you know, nobody can do anything about it, including yeah. in, in Sharia law and the afterlife. Well, I think, I think a, a lot of that kind of thinking also comes uh, from religion. Um, yeah, the, the books explicitly, not necessarily about trans, but just... Uh, they're just completely bigoted books to begin with. Um, but for some reason, a lot of uh, people coming from a religious background seems to get a pass when it comes to bigotry. Why do you suppose that is? <laughs> I, and can I add something, Eric? Sorry, regarding that, I think, you know, for me making this film, I was always, I always knew I wanted to make it. It was never a question because I admire journalists so much. For me, this is almost like a love letter to journalism. This is the ethical dilemmas we face every day going into a conflict area, sacrificing our personal lives, going through hell, you know, being um, treated badly, uh, attacked sometimes physically, shot at, etc. Just to kind of explore that there are other people, other civilizations, other ways of living, and just trying to like report back, document that and show show the world. So I think, of course, ethically, there were so many things we had to navigate, but we tried to be transparent about it. We discussed it a lot in the edit. We incorporated some of these ethical dilemmas in the film, which I am very proud of, uh, which was hard, you know, to sort of kind of bring the audience into these. But but we thought it was fair. Yeah. Oh, I, I kind of take it back. You mentioned uh, uh, not familiar with the term, the conflict journalism is journalism, not all conflict. That seems redundant. You know, there's like a war journalist category. Like you, you oh, are okay. trained to go into hostile areas. Sometimes people pay you more for it. If you're freelance, you get paid the same, but it's, it's the whole like category of journalism. Yes. Like you're political journalists. If you live in Washington, but you're a conflict journalist, you basically deploy to war zones like, uh, like the military would do or something. I got you. And so like uh, with this, uh, it sounds like, am I correct in uh, assuming that with this uh, documentary, you kind of fell into it, which I guess most documentaries, unless it's a thing, like I'm going to do a documentary about this book specifically, like unless you're going that granular, you just kind of fall into documentaries, right? Like how going forward or stuff you've done in the past, how like what are some discoveries you made while you were doing the, oh, I'm going to follow this story. Up, oh, turns out it's this story actually. Um, I think. Well, I mean, this documentary specifically transition. When we first, well, when I first started shooting before Mon uh, joined the project, like we didn't know the Taliban were even going to take over Afghanistan. So exactly what you just said, we started shooting something. We didn't really know what it was. It was just a story about a person transitioning in Afghanistan. But then the Taliban took over, and it became a completely different story. But nobody knew that was going to happen. Yeah. Have there been any, uh, not not with this uh, documentary, uh, because this documentary exists, but have, has there been any sort of uh, stories you followed in the past that's like, oh, I think I had a story here. Turns out it's nothing. Just wasted all this time following this story and it turned out to be a red herring. Is that, do you want to go on? Sure. No, I mean, I want to first of all say how we met Jordan and I and how my participation in this documentary started, because I think it was really interesting. And it, it kind of refers to your question that for me, access is the most important thing to delve into a topic or to start doing a documentary. And I was really sort of jealous of Jordan because I had heard about him in the journalistic community. Uh, he had this amazing access. He was doing something for the New York Times. And I was like, you know, really impressed with the intimacy that he had been able to get from the Taliban, that foreigners were just simply not getting that access, you know, and, and that glimpse into their life more than access. So we met and I, you know, immediately we clicked, I think, and we thought this would be a great exploration. And, you know, two years later, later it's been one of the most amazing experiences in my life doing this documentary and uh we became really good friends and uh yes i mean 
I think sometimes to answer your question, you go into a story thinking it's going to be something and then it's not. But in this one, we very much went in thinking something and it became much larger, I think, much more challenging as well, much more difficult. I and I think like, oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. For me as a filmmaker, um, and I think a lot of a lot of documentary filmmakers uh, will agree with this because you end up spending long periods of time with your characters, right? You really become a part of their life. And, you know, the line between professional and personal often gets very blurry. And I think, you know, there might be this traditional belief about, you know, the filmmaker having to be completely objective and only telling the story from a very neutral position. I think that's absolute bullshit. It's not the way that I make films or tell stories at all. I think to get the best out of your characters, the closer you are with them, the better. It's impossible. I mean, if you then go on to become completely brainwashed and end up telling, you know, a PR piece, making a PR film, then okay, like that's kind of a failed project. But I know for myself, I never become so completely lost that I end up doing the PR for the character. But getting really personal does make better films and does bring out the best characters. But I've, I have shot myself in the foot with that Twice, one time specifically whereby I was following a family whose son had been kidnapped in Afghanistan and this little eight-year-old boy was being tortured by the kidnappers and sending the videos to the family for ransom. And I became so close with the family that I ended up stopping the film because I just couldn't see the value of how it was going to be helping them in this time of pain and trauma. And I then started investing my time in trying to help them find their son rather than making the film. So I guess we have to be careful not to get too close for that reason as well. That, that's actually interesting you bring that up because early on in the movie you had the 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 the, the gunfire in the uh, in the documentary and it got me thinking just uh, journalists in general like do you got someone taking a picture of a gazelle and a tiger is about to uh, attack the gazelle and then people are watching going well why didn't he step in and stop the tiger and it's like well that's just the nature of life but for some reason when it's people um, and you see gunfire it's like you should maybe call someone and say that that uh, this rebel group's about to go fire at them. But then you can't because you're supposed, you know, you're supposed to be the the fly on the wall. Like, I, yeah, how yeah, do you a, weigh that? Because that that seems like very difficult spot to be in. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure Mon's got a bunch of stories with that as well. But I know that for me, like, you know, there's been many times where I've actually put down the camera and intervened, and you know, I didn't get the shot, and I regret that now actually because I mean, unless it's something really profound that you're doing when you put the camera down. But I mean, I don't know. Like, there's been times where I've put the camera down and and hugged the character and really become their friend in that moment rather than the filmmaker. And I mean, I would argue that that is a choice that you make case by case, moment by moment. Sometimes you put the camera down and you do something. Sometimes you do both. You get the shot and then you do the human thing. Sometimes you do the other. Exactly. I think it's it's very it's very case by case. I think when you're really in doubt, just be human and support humanity is the kind of general rule that I go by. I remember, for instance, um, documenting migrants, you know, migrating to America from Central America and spending days and days on end following them and as they were being smuggled, etc. And someone told us we shouldn't share our food with them or something because it would interfere reality. Like they are starving, they are hungry and they're famished. We should not as a crew share the food with them. And I thought that was so ridiculous. Oh. Of course, I'm going to share my, I'm not going to eat by myself. I mean, that's just what kind of a horrible person are you? So I think think it's you know there are no there is no ethical rule book in that case um and i think uh it's just why it's such a difficult profession but i mean the world is difficult i mean i think there is an ethical rule book according to like being a human if someone's starving of course <laughs> exactly. we're gonna share our food with them well why is uh why is feeding them any different than uh a crew and a camera being right there does that not affect the reality yeah exactly exactly well meaning like you know you're following and you're doing a reportage yeah. about these people's conditions and maybe this child hasn't eaten in three days is that going to change that was the reality if had this crew not been there but again it's um jordan and i talk about it a lot too it's we also have immense privilege you know being the crew that gets there and gets to film and decide what's being filmed. So I think it's very important to have that power and balance in mind and always just be a good person, be a decent human being, you know, um, and be and aware. That's so stupid. 
that like, you know, if the crew wasn't here, A, B and C, well, the crew is here. Is there, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But if we've all crew, heard, you know, these kind of, um, yeah. If the crew was here, they would give them like a sandwich. That. So here you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just like pretend we're not here. Well, we are here. <laughs> yeah, know? I think the industry is really like, it's moved on from that kind of old school thinking, I think. Yeah. Yes. Don't know how much time I have, so I'll just end with this. Uh, we have a what's in the box segment. And in the box, we have a bunch of movies that people put movies into and we pull one out every week and watch it for the following week. And these are movies that um, are like either really personal to you or movies that you're like, man, that one's so good. Why does no one talk about that? What's a movie you would like to put into the box? Oh, the Wanted 18. The Wanted 18? The Wanted 18. You can rent it for like 5 or $6 from the website. It's a film about uh, 18 cows in Palestine. It is absolutely, it's hilarious. It's a political comedy. It's absolutely fantastic, hilarious, brilliant film, The Wanted 18. All right. Hey, Monica? Um, well, I'm, I'm going to be sort of a documentary nerd. I mostly watch documentaries. And the one I would recommend is The Eternal Memory. It's not talked about enough, although it was nominated for the Oscars, which I'm very glad. And I know the filmmaker. It is such a beautiful documentary. It's about a famous Chilean journalist who is wants everybody to know that Chile was going through a military dictatorship, but at the same time, he is overcoming, uh, he, he is diagnosed with Alzheimer and is forgetting everything. So it's kind of a dual story told very beautifully and elegantly, and it's just heartbreaking but beautiful and i thought the filmmaker navigated that really well it sounds right. amazing the wanted 18 is also a documentary oh yeah but uh, i mean we mostly cover indie movies so documentary is part of our milieu so to speak all right but uh yeah transition uh will come to streaming starting march 26 and uh this is a fantastic documentary and jordan uh watching this i fell in love with you uh you know wanted <laughs> wanted the best from you monica falling in love with you right now talking to you in person so uh, you guys are you guys have been great and uh thanks for joining me on the show cheers thank man so much for having us. great talk thank you